Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you're all having a great day and that you're all doing well. Welcome back to another weekend edition where I try to take things a bit slower than my normal uh, weekday videos where I tend to talk extremely fast. I always stumble over my words regardless of how quick or slow I'm speaking, so get ready for that. Um, this is going to be about the uh, potential possible manipulation of the crypto market exactly what's going on. A lot of people have their own opinions. I found this really interesting article where they, uh, the website itself <clears throat> actually had the chance to talk to a number of uh, crypto experts, if you want to call them that, people who have been in this space for a relatively long amount of time. And um, everyone has their own definite opinion on what they think is happening or has happened to the market. The main reason for uh, me bringing that up is that uh, simply after the markets began falling in January and then we thought that we would have a recovery in February, around March and April is when we started getting the uh, first predictions or continued predictions that the market would go up. The market's definitely going to go back up. We heard that May the markets would go back up. We heard during consensus the market would go back up. We heard during the beginning of June the market would go back up. We heard <clears throat> someone else say that uh, May would be the last time that Bitcoin was $10,000. That has uh, not happened. Uh, so um, it goes a bit further than just people thinking that it's just mean uh, manipulation. But I, like I said, I'm going to read through it. And I, as always, will tell you what I think and how I feel about some of the things that they are saying or have said, because I will obviously <laughs> disagree uh, with some of their opinions. So to start it off, this week has not been too bright for the price of Bitcoin and other major cryptocurrencies as the market turns red. The price of Bitcoin started falling from 7,600 to a low of just over 6,500 as of press time. From the most recent slump that began on June 10th to a reprieve at the announcement that the SEC won't consider Ethereum a security, the markets continue to go down as well as up at the moment. I believe they're up by like 1%, but that doesn't really count because it's the weekend. Um, the main factor or what has gotten a number of people riled up is that after we had this significant news that we had been waiting for for a long time that we thought we would not get potentially until 2019 that the uh, coin Ethereum or Ether is not a security, uh, we expected the next bull run to begin because we finally had clarity on the, uh, you know, regulatory side of the cryptocurrency market. This did not happen. And now a number of people have come forward with their ideas as to what they think um, is actually wrong with cryptocurrencies right now. It has led many investors and interested parties to question what is going on in the market, especially in comparison to the highs of December of last year. A few experts in the field of cryptocurrency, investing, and markets spoke to Cointelegraph, that's the website I'm on, to give their insight to the current market situation and why it is dropping. They told, they uh, spoke to Naim Aslam, Emin Gunsirir, Tom Lee, Miguel Palencia, and Alistair Milna. And they said they all discussed their thoughts as to why the market is falling. First up is Naim Aslam. On June 11th, it was reported that a small cryptocurrency exchange in South Korea was hacked and many mainstream media outlets tied this catalyst to a reason for the sudden downturn in the market because mainstream media, they never know what they're talking about and they love to uh, stab cryptocurrencies. Whenever anything slightly negative happens, they run with it because it's how they get their views. They No one watches their channels otherwise. However... Many commentators have refuted this cause and effect link and have sought other reasons for why the price is down. However, regardless of how much effect the hack directly had on the price of Bitcoin, Naeem Aslam, who is the chief market analyst at Think Markets, discusses how this latest hack is another instance of negative press for the cryptocurrency space. He said, and I do quote, Exchanges are not utilizing the top-notch technology to protect consumers, and hackers are taking full advantage of this issue. The question is, is there any limit to these hacks? After every few months, we are seeing the same pattern emerging. This is the result of loose regulatory control, and regulators must step in to protect the consumers. Anyone who wants to do with anything with exchanges should be forced to adopt high-grade security and regular security upgrades. I don't think that it comes down to regulation. 
I think this should be happening regardless, um, especially when it comes to things like, for the moment, Coinbase has had Coinbase has had a relatively good run when it comes to security, and they made sure to beef up their security as well. When you're dealing with a situation where you're holding potentially 50 million, 100 million dollars of other people's money, you should um, be doing this yourself, especially if you're in the cryptocurrency space. He said the effects of these hacks add a far bigger element of risk to investing in cryptocurrencies and for the new market of traditional investors, this is a big turnoff. He continued saying, traditional investors would look for riskier assets when the bull market is in full throttle and investors run for the hills when bears are in town. However, smart investors use a slightly different approach. They move their funds from riskier assets to those where they can seek safety. For instance, in a bull market, sectors such as financial, tech, and energy are the most favorite sectors where when the market starts to fall off the cliff, potential managers and hedge funds start to favor sectors such as consumer staples. They seek stocks with better dividend yields because even though the general trend in the market could be on the downside, they still get a better yield relative to the overall market. Very, very true. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's... Uh, this is what I said a couple of videos ago, and I've spoken about it before as well. I think the hacks in particular, I don't think they have a major um, effect, I want to say, on where the cryptocurrency market is now. We had we had hacks in 2017. We had hacks in 2016. Uh, I think a lot of people in the cryptocurrency space either say that they're FUD or completely don't pay attention to them at all. And I think it's the mainstream people who end up paying attention to it, and this could kind of leak into where we are but when it comes to like the entire hacking situation i don't think this is uh one of the main it could be the main factor for why uh trillions haven't entered into the market but it's also why i believe that a lot like i said before a lot of the names that we have in cryptocurrencies right now will not be here in five years because um i think they're using the hacks to their benefit the newer companies who are trying to get in <clears throat> you may have noticed the last couple of months um the major players, Bloomberg, Forbes, uh, NASDAQ, they're all trying to get into the crypto custody space and also into cryptocurrency exchanges. So when they have you know, a household name that is allowing you to keep your cryptocurrencies with them or to be able to trade your cryptocurrencies from them and or keep them in their care, I think this is when we will start to see more people get in because of uh, the little hacks that are happening. Like I said, me personally, I don't think this is a major factor in why uh, the market is the way that it is. Next up, they spoke a bit to Emin Gun Sirer. I hope I'm saying that correct, um, where he spoke about um, a crackdown on the manipulation. One of the biggest news stories to come out this week that had also been tied to the downturn of the market is that research indicates Tether and Bitfinex were at the center of price manipulation, which led to December's high of nearly $20,000. Emin Gun Sirir, associate professor at Cornell University, looks not only at this news, but also at the fact that there is a law enforcement crackdown coming on price manipulators as a result as to why the market is down. He also explains how the cryptocurrency market has not decoupled yet, which only adds a bigger sentiment of negativity. He said... The cryptocurrency markets are in their early stages. We know this from the fact that the coins still have not decoupled. They all move in unison, regardless of the merits of one project over the other. This indicates that systemic risk to the area dominates all other concerns, he told Coin Telegraph. This is one of my main arguments. A lot of people don't agree with me, but it's clear that it's happening. Um, my main thought process now has changed over the last year. If these coins in the market are as great and as amazing as we say that they are, their price should be dictated by how good they are and what they can do and how they're being integrated and what they're being used for. I know that Bitcoin is the market leader. There's no disputing that. It's just how life is at the moment. Uh, but I think this is a major problem because imagine trying to get into not even cryptocurrencies, but into stocks and you put your money into let's say like a company that makes like diapers or something like that. And then one day your friend tells you, oh, watch out because, you know, this stock that sells TVs, when they go down, your diaper stock will also go down. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And um, I've spoken to a couple of, you know, not a huge amount of people who try to get into cryptocurrencies and I tell them exactly how the market is, you know, uh, especially if they're risk averse. 
Uh, and when they find out that everything follows the price of one coin, they tend to shy away from the market because no one wants something else to dictate what you have. You don't want the uh, housing prices in Tokyo to go down and then your housing prices in California also slam down with it. It's not a, uh, a re uh, you know a very good trade-off. So he said, the current downturn is motivated by one such perceived risk, the law enforcement action on exchanges and their efforts to put stop to price manipulation. This was a long time in the making and cannot happen soon enough. He said, I suspect that law enforcement action will be modest in scope and will bring much needed clarity and positivity to markets. While this investigation into price manipulation may be having a negative effect on Bitcoin's current price, it can only be viewed as positive. And for gun he, he said it cannot happen soon enough. He said, the fact is that these technologies are poised to transform the way we do business. They should not need market manipulation to sustain their value. I'm looking forward to a decoupled world where markets are able to evaluate each coin on their own merits. I know a lot of people don't like the sound of that, but it's true. Wouldn't you feel better knowing that the coins you're holding right now, uh, for lack of a better word, are trash or not good and that you could put it into another coin that's actually going to be used or another coin that's going to be integrated into something else. A lot of people uh, don't agree. I know a lot of people like their altcoins. Um, I try to tell you, please don't get too emotionally attached to a protocol that you cannot touch, that is on your screen, that you have no actual control over. Um, but I'm hoping that. I, I don't see this happening anytime soon and that's kind of what... Uh, that makes me sad, uh, but I wish it would happen a bit quicker. I assume we have three to five years for this to actually take place. A lot of people don't, uh, the experts, other experts, not these people, they think that crypto won't go officially mainstream for around another two, three, four, five years. Somewhere around there, we need uh, not only regulatory clarity, but we need um, actual integration. We need um, actual really, you know, use cases for these coins. And I don't think... Um, at least for some of the coins, I could see about four of them out of the top 100 actually uh, moving on their own within the next two years. But I think for the rest of them, we need actual use cases. And until that happens, I don't think they are going anywhere. So Tom Lee, who we've spoken about many times, is Tom Lee and the other... Oh, I can't remember his name. It's it's some other man. I always forget these the, the names. I, I don't, and, and it's really weird because they're always in the videos as well. So you would assume that I would at least remember their first name. Uh, but Tom Lee is someone who's always in the news. Uh, he's a very big proponent of cryptocurrencies. Tom Lee, who is the co-founder and head of research at Fundstrat Global Advisors, who is renowned for his bullish predictions on the Bitcoin price, has given Cointelegraph three reasons why the Bitcoin market is diving and also mentioned his feelings on the futures market. I think we spoke about this a day or two ago. He said... I think there are several factors why crypto are falling. One, we have a we had a parabolic move at the end of last year. So there's a period of consolidation and price adjustment that is taking place. I also think bigger factors this year have been a lot of government actions that have been taken this year and have scared crypto investors. Probably the most notable is the actions taken by the US regulators like the SEC uh, taking actions against ICOs. Lastly, the pace of institutional investor participation in this space has been taking longer than expected. And I think part of that has to do with the slowness of getting some of the on-ramps established. Um, I think the entire institutional investor thing has been uh, relatively fine. I think it's all the other news that's kind of scaring these people away. And I still think uh, when we have in writing from the SEC or the CFTC or the ABC, whatever other company out there needs to kind of get it together, when we know exactly on paper uh, what these coins are and what they are going to do and what they can be used for and what the tax purposes are. This is when I think the market will start moving. That's at least how I feel. Lee also told Bloomberg that he feels that the expiration of Bitcoin futures contracts has a part to play in the most recent decline in Bitcoin price. He explains this further to Cointelegraph by saying that these volatile movements from futures will not persist indefinitely. He said... Futures markets in normal liquid markets where there is broad participation don't have an effect on the underlie. The future itself is adding liquidity or attracting liquidity because institutions can use it. He said, in crypto right now, the market has a supply-demand problem because mining rewards coupled with tax selling 
and other factors have caused more supply versus demand for crypto. Futures markets have been subject to some pot potential manipulation. I don't think it will be the case in the years for now. But even though the futures markets at the moment are only a hundred million or so contracts, it is still uh, better. It is still able to affect the Bitcoin price. Part of the problem now, uh, we're talking about mining rewards, is that we are at the uh, what's the word in English? We're at the border of um, where people may start uh, stop mining uh, Bitcoin because you know they only they're mining. Or creating these coins because it's profitable to them the moment it doesn't become profitable they eventually stop and depending on where you are in the world this number goes anywhere from two thousand dollars to around six thousand dollars to mine one bitcoin if the price of bitcoin goes below six thousand people will stop doing this and it's also becoming an issue because the lower the price of bitcoin gets the more the uh the more the miners have to sell back into the market to be able to make the money back so that they can pay for the taxes of them having mined, if that makes sense. You know, if you mine, you have to pay taxes. The, if Bitcoin was, you know, 50,000 and it costs 6,000 to make one Bitcoin, they only have to sell off a small fraction, but they're having to sell off, you know, whole Bitcoins back into the market. And this is uh, causing like a, a seesaw effect where people are, uh, richer people are trying to gobble up as many as they can, but there are more that are being pushed into the market from people who are panic selling and from miners around the world who are creating two, three, four, five hundred 500 Bitcoin a day uh, multiple times around the world that are all being pushed back into the market. And then you have the futures markets, which are also panicking because the price of Bitcoin is going down on our side. And also per, uh, they perceive that the price will continue to go down. So then they also give a lower price on the futures market. And people who are looking to get into the cryptocurrency market, look at the price of the futures to see where the price of Bitcoin is. And it's causing this like ridiculous loop, almost in like a, um, what's the word in English? Like, um, Teufelkreis. It's like a, like a, a, a bad, um, devil circle or something like that. Like, like you would say, you know, it's a, it's a horrible loop that's happening and we have to kind of break out of it. And I don't know if we're uh, going to be able to do that anytime soon. And it's a bit worrying. So my favorite portion of all of this is from Miguel Palencia, who is talking about the whales in the market. For Miguel Palencia, Chief Information Officer at Qtum, he said this current low has a lot to do with the faux decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies, which are still expanding and distributing. He talked to Cointelegraph of the effect that whales are having on moving the price around, but also makes mention of how these types of players in a relatively small and new market are also helping the ecosystem stay alive. He said, and I do quote, Bitcoin, like other assets and technologies, goes through cycles that affect its use which is often correlated within the asset price. What we have here is that the cycle was accelerated by situations which can be solved by fully decentralized operations. Eventually, when the blockchain ecosystem becomes fully decentralized and not controlled by big stakeholders and whales, it will bring back trust into the markets and we can see the markets climbing again on the other uh, sorry, yeah on the other hand <laughs> these market movers and shakers supported by true bitcoin believers will not let bitcoin reach zero i don't think there will ever be a moment in the next 100 years where bitcoin will hit zero i think we would need quantum computers to destroy the bitcoin blockchain to completely remove any hope or trust that we had in bitcoin even if bitcoin becomes in some weird future, the 15th coin on the coin market cap list, I think there was, I, I would still buy it. And I know a lot of other people would as well. I would still not only increase my position in Bitcoin, but I would still buy it just because of the name Bitcoin. I think it would be cool to be able to say, hey, I own a hundred of these, even though they're worth, you know, $15 each, whatever the case might be. Part of my argument for this, um, on the fully decentralized operation, um, I know, as I've spoken about this before, or if I have this in a video, or if this is the title of a video, I get dumb, uh, dumbed down. <laughs> I get thumbs, yeah, you see, it's dumb. I get thumbs down very quickly because a lot of people think that I'm lying, that I'm making up stuff, or they just don't want to believe that it's true. When I first got into Bitcoin, it had to be around 2012, 13, somewhere around there, don't remember the exact time, the thing that got me into Bitcoin was that it was heralded as this decentralized, amazing thing 
No one owns a lot of Bitcoin. You can own your own Bitcoin. You can all mine your own Bitcoin. It's for everyone. It's for everything. The idea was that by 2020, everybody would have at least, at least most people would have around a fourth of a Bitcoin, you know, half a Bitcoin because only 21 million that ever supposed to be around. Um, and everybody would have a fraction. This is one of the main things when you, I'm sure you all saw these exact same things when you were looking on the, on the, uh, on the internet for news about it, you know, how can you buy Bitcoin? And people said, you know, you don't have to actually have to own one whole Bitcoin. You can own fractions of it. And you go, oh, that's pretty cool. You can own 0 0.0001 of a Bitcoin. Wow, everyone can have one. The problem is um, a lot of people believe, myself kind of included, in order to get away from the whales and or market manipulation or to become fully decentralized, we would need a world or some type of space where everyone has an equal or somewhat equal portion of um, each cryptocurrency. As we are all adults and we know that life is not fair, that is not how anything works. Um, on the entire topic of decentralization as far as everyone holding an equal fragment of each coin, um, I've said this before in a number of other videos. I don't know if you believe me or not, uh, if you type in, uh, even on Google, Bitcoin rich list, you can see it quite clearly. And I'll show you one second. I had it highlighted, but it, of course it clicked off because it's just my luck. 4% of wallets, that is from here to here, control from 8.6% down here to 258 control 95.6% of all Bitcoin in existence. With the rest of the, you know, the world... People literally, you know, I, I've said this before on the videos, I was so, I'm so flabbergasted when people get upset at me when I uh, say that uh, I think the market needs to be decoupled from Bitcoin because not a lot of people, I'm especially, I assume especially people who are listening, don't probably own 1,000 to 10,000 or 100,000 Bitcoin. Just me assuming, if I'm wrong, sorry about that to the listener, uh, but this is what I'm, you know, what I'm saying. Um, I don't see any near future where someone who owns or multiple people who own 290,000, 2.95 million, 400,000 Bitcoin uh, plan on distributing that equally to all of these people. When it comes to the whales, uh, they're not going to do it either. The same exact thing for Ethereum. Believe me, Bitcoin is not the only coin. Uh, this is why I love the internet because all of this information can be found extremely easily. Um, anytime you don't believe me on when I say something, I don't say things just to waste my breath or just to try to sound cool. I don't think I sound cool. I think I actually hate my voice. Um, I say it because I've looked around before. And even when it comes to the top uh, Ethereum wallets, you know, you can say, oh, yeah, some of these must be exchanges. Yeah, this one belongs to Kraken. This one belongs to Bittrex. This one is from Digix Crowd Sale. But the other ones, they belong to people who got into Ethereum very quick. Same exact thing for XRP. There's even like there's um like there's a, a a rich list or something like that uh, for the people who own XRP. I think in order to become completely decentralized, I think we are far beyond that ever happening in the cryptocurrency space. This is not to be a downer. Like I said, I'm here to tell you guys the truth and I'm telling you to you know let you know exactly what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, there are actually a couple celebrities you've seen them on TV, and I'm not going to say their names. Uh, it's about three guys who have, um, I'm going to give you a hint, uh, they've been in the news recently about Ripple, or have been on the news about Ripple, and I'm not talking about Garling House, I'm talking about people who you've seen in movies or TV shows, um, who actually are, are rumored to own around like 100 uh, million to a billion XRP, it's the same exact thing with these other ones, like we know that there are um, a couple of billionaires and celebrities who own around like half a million Ethereum, um, on the yeah on, on this entire topic i don't think we're going to get away from it and as much as i hate it um we actually need them i'm going to you know so it's a double edged sword then according to palencia he said wells must surely have a part to play in the supposed market manipulation but they're also a driving force in keeping the market afloat with their own investment this is the part that i hate to admit the most is that as much as i hate wells I don't hate you for being rich. I don't hate you for having this much money. Believe me, I would love to have a fraction of that. Uh, it's the fact that we rely on, we have to rely on the manipulation in order to keep the market afloat. We saw Bitcoin's price move down 
uh, when there were rumors last week or the week before that that 3,000 Bitcoin had been moved across the network from one wallet to another. They hadn't even been sold. The market went down when the guy from Mt. Gox, I believe, sold 12,500 Bitcoin, somewhere around there, you know, more or less. Imagine what would happen to the Bitcoin price if someone sold 2.95 million Bitcoin at once. If these top people all sold their Bitcoin the exact same time, I think the price of Bitcoin, you'd, I think a banana would be more expensive than the price of one Bitcoin. Uh, if any type of manipulation and or price movement that can occur from someone selling 12,000 Bitcoin, 10,000 Bitcoin, and moving 3,000 to get us from 20,000 where we were before to around, where, where are we, 6,500 or something like that? Imagine the effect on the price of Bitcoin if 1 million were dropped back into the market. Um, there were also, there was an article I read a year ago. Uh, people were afraid that at some point the, uh, whoever owns the Satoshi Nakamoto wallet, yes, it is real. You can type in Satoshi Nakamoto wallet in Google and it'll show you, I think it has, it has more than a million Bitcoin. For some reason, people keep sending entire Bitcoins to this address. I'm not sure if they want to make him richer or whatever the case kind of is. Um, there were fears that at some point, whoever controls it or the multiple people who may have uh, control over the wallet, who may be Satoshi Nakamoto, would eventually start to cash out of the market. Uh, because, you know, you know, if, it, if Bitcoin hits a million, you may want to cash out at least five of them. But what kind of panic this would cause in the market? Um, so like I said, uh, I think we've come to a point where no matter what we say, no matter what we think, we need the whales <laughs> because they're keeping the market afloat. Um, even if, you know, of the three wallets that hold over 400,000, I think two of these belong to the Winklevoss twins. Or maybe all three actually belong to the Winklevoss twins. They were um, in the news. I think they said all their Bitcoin was actually separated uh, between, I think, three addresses. And I think they probably made them into like even smaller chunks. They have them in like... Um, Okay, have you guys ever seen Harry Potter? Not to completely uh, uh, segue away from this, uh, where the main villain, Voldemort, has, you know, his soul in, like, seven different places around the world. Uh, the Winklevoss twins actually have all their Bitcoin in, like, I'm assuming, like, at least 50 places around the world, uh, almost like Horcruxes. I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting when I heard that in the news. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the topic at hand. Um, yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't care for the whales. We have them. Uh, even for where we are now with the market literally going sideways, this is happening because they are manipulating the market to move sideways and not slamming down into the ground. There's no way to solve this. We heard news about the guy three weeks ago who accumulated, I think, 30,000 Bitcoin within the course of a six-month period. Um, I think what will eventually help in the long run is that as more rich people get into the game and get into the system, there are a lot of people who are um, creating these like mining platforms and mining this and, you know, these major mining uh, warehouses and stuff like that. They've all noted like the really rich people that they just plan on buying in, uh, um, buying the hardware and mining Bitcoin for as long as they live. Um, and they, can, they, they plan on keeping all this Bitcoin and just passing it on to their kids. So uh, I think they will eventually be part of the saving grace in the, in the cryptocurrency world and that they're going to keep buying Bitcoin normally and keep mining it so that they keep all of it to themselves. So we're going to have this um, super unequal world like we already do right now, um, but they will, uh, in a you know, optimistic way of looking at it, be able to keep the prices of cryptocurrencies up from where they are right now. I don't even spend too much time on this. Uh, but I, I read this earlier and I was like, it, it's so true and it absolutely hurts. Um, next up is Alistair Milnes. Hope I'm saying that correct. Um, as he, he spoke a bit about why he thinks the market has slowed down. Alistair Milna, I hope that's a guy, CIO of the um, Altana Digital Currency Fund and founder of CoinTrader, is examining the entire year's performance and putting that December rally into perspective. The markets may well be down compared to the highs of $20,000, but $6,000 and $7,000 per Bitcoin is still pretty good. And I quote, It is a combination of rapid slowdown and adoption, user growth and profit taking, as well as hedging, Milna told Cointelegraph, explaining why he believes the market is currently where it is. He said altcoins particularly become very overvalued and were overdue a correction. We are now searching for equilibrium again. 
where demand meets supply. From a macro point of view, it has never been better. So I feel comparisons to 2014 to 2015 are misplaced. While many are hoping that Bitcoin has reached and uh, the Bitcoin bottom has been reached and the downturn is ending, Milna still thinks it is coming, but that it will provide a much more stable base to rebuild upon. He said, I think after we eventually bottom, it will be far more gradual. It'll be a far more gradual comeback for the price likely accelerating in 2019. I have just about, um, I told you guys that a couple videos ago, I changed my mindset on the market. I think I have, I don't want to say lost hope, um, but I'm not expecting a jump in 2018 at all. I don't think we're going to get one because of regulation. Like I, I don't think the market actually cares about manipulation as much as the media or um, major news networks would like us to think. I think a lot of people understand that the market has been manip manipulated for a while, but it helps how do I say this? As long as people are making money, I don't think they care that other people are manipulating it as long as they're getting their own pockets filled. Um, not to compare the entire crypto market to BitConnect, but you guys kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, people knew that it was a scam, not to call crypto a scam, um, but people continue to buy into it because they were lining their pockets with it. Uh, so I, I, in my opinion, this should, I mean, like literally we don't know. Crypto shot up last year when no one was expecting it and then went up from Bitcoin went from 900 to 20,000 over the course of like a six, seven month period. Could shoot up at any time, but I'm still, I think I've set my mind to 2019 when the market will eventually start to go up uh, because we're getting closer then to 2020, which is when uh, Bitcoin's mining reward gets cut in half. Um, just how I, I feel about it. A lot of people are still saying that Bitcoin will go down to 3,500. Um, or even 3,000. I saw some saying like 2,200. I think this would be, they, they say, or the idea is, is that it would be healthy for the market because we would have a more accurate um, number as to the value of Bitcoin and to the value of other things. I think a value that low from 20,000 to 2,200 would be detrimental to the entire market. And I think we wouldn't be able to recover for a long time. I think Tether would need to print about $7 billion worth of uh, Tether in order to pump the market back up again because um, we are currently in the moment where you can call it a bear market. But if we hit 2,000 from 20,000, uh, that would be a huge indicator that a bubble has popped and we have all come slamming back down. It would be nice to buy some altcoins that cheap again, but I don't uh, like the idea of Bitcoin going down that low. But for whatever reason, relatively, we're sitting between... 6,000 and 8,000 over the last two months, we keep like fluctuating back and forth. And this is kind of where I think we'll remain for a while. This is just like I said, my opinion. This isn't what's going to happen. Um, I'm just a simple man talking into a microphone, uh, but this is just how I feel about the market. I think I've come to terms deep with, you know, within myself as to what exactly is going to happen uh, with the prices of all of these coins. To finish it up, the sentiment around the markets may be negative. And one for concern when it comes to everyday investors. But overall, the experts spoken to do not seem to be raising any cause for alarm. Gunsirer is calling for more regulation and policing to try and stamping out the perceived market manipulation. And Palencia raises a good point about the need for whales at the moment. We actually do need them. That's the sad part. But in the future, true decentralization, which I do not think will ever happen, will be reached and Bitcoin will be stronger for it. Milna is also looking ahead, not worried about a bottom still to be reached, as it would allow for Bitcoin to gradually come back stronger. Aslam also brings up an important aspect that needs to be sorted out, that of the hacks and poor security which are affecting market confidence. There's a lot that needs to be patched up in the cryptocurrency market, and when these things are sorted out, the price should follow in repairing itself to a more pleasant level. Um, thank you, I don't know this person, thank you, Darren Pollock. For the article, I like things like this. I like when there's like a, uh, um, when they get to speak to other people because, you know, we have our own ideas and stuff like that of why we think uh, the market is where it is or where crypto is going. Uh, there's still a lot of people who definitely remain, uh, remain in the mindset that Bitcoin is going up to $65,000 this year. I think the lowest I've heard this year so far was $25,000. Um, and a lot of like floating around 50 and 55, somewhere in between these numbers. Wherever, whatever ends up happening, like I've said before, I'm in this for the long run. It's a bit disappointing, I'm sure, for all of you as well. We would like to have a a bit of a stronger market. 
Um, but I think it's a nice indication of where the market is heading that we have not dropped back down to 2000 or even 1000 where we were in 2017. Because Bitcoin previously in the past has, you know, uh, when we have a huge jump, it, you know, we kind of recede and then it jumps back higher again, but we never actually recede back to where the beginning was before. I think that, you know, there's a lot of hope for the cryptocurrency markets. Who knows exactly what's going to propel it? We've heard so much from other experts and other people who said that crypto was going to shoot up on a certain day. That I think was the uh, was the killing factor for a lot of the predictions is that they said an exact day um, and the market didn't end up moving at all. Uh, let's see exactly where this takes us. I know, like I said, a lot of you are a bit frustrated with the market, um, but if you're in it for the long haul, then enjoy the ride. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. If that's how you take in the information. Thank you once again for all of the support. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are having a great weekend or weekday, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Thank you for watching and or listening. And I will talk to you all soon. See you.